Welcome to Coffee Talk from the Ground Up, an ECS podcast, where we strive to provide a more personable way to communicate with employees. I'm Steve Goslin, but you can call me Goose, and I'm part of our senior leadership team, and I'm joined here by Julie Smith, who is part of the marketing communications team and our resident Chocoholic. Say hi, Julie. Thanks, Steve. Hey, everyone. I'm glad you're joining us today. So, Steve, what are we doing here? Great question, Julie. One of the struggles with a company our size is getting a message to the masses without it being diluted along the way. From projects and people to services and career insight, we hope this podcast helps provide an avenue to communicate the stories that are worth sharing. It's to learn about our culture and feel more connected and to have some fun along the way. So what you're saying is, we hope this podcast is educational, entertaining, and encouraging. With practical advice, you can apply directly to your work and life. Well said, Julie, and that's why you're in marketing. (laughs) So grab a cup and settle in. Our attorney makes us say this. This podcast is for entertainment and informational purposes only. Nothing herein shall be construed as providing professional engineering services or used to establish the standard of care. This podcast and the comments contained therein represent only the personal views of the participants and do not reflect those of ECS. While we make every effort to ensure that the information we are sharing is accurate, we welcome any comments, suggestions, or correction of errors. Thanks for making the time to meet with us again, Matt. As we like to start every meeting, would you like to give us a safety minute? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So the thing that we've been talking about in the the standing committee and the safety, um, our general safety meetings this past month or so is driving. And it's one of the things that everybody deals with, regardless if you're a technician going to work and going from job A to job B, or if you're, you know, somebody going into one of the offices, administrators, that type of thing. So it's, it's something very relevant, obviously, because everybody deals with it. And as a safety professional, it's challenging because you're in a situation that isn't able to be controlled um, by yourself. You're you're interacting with a lot of other people and a lot of other people's decisions, which can ultimately affect your safety. So um, that's a challenging thing to do every day for our, for our folks. And, we, you know, it's reflective of some of the numbers sometimes whenever we see motor vehicle accidents. But uh, the cool thing about that is the numbers of fatalities and injuries over the years have actually kind of staggered and, and leveled off and i think that's a testament to our auto industry and and, um the folks that are building the roads and the engineers that that design this type of stuff because we have more people on the road there's more miles driven every year yet the the number of people um you know dying in motor vehicle accidents has actually leveled off and and actually went down at some point in the last 10 15 years so airbags you know the the crush zone or the crumple zones of vehicles and how strong the roofs are of, of some of these vehicles so um, in a weird way, it's actually kind of cool. Um, they're becoming safer and safer, and, and I think that's a, a testament to some of the new thinking in uh, in motor vehicles and motor vehicle safety. Instead of saying we're going to prevent every accident and injury, we're saying when it happens, we're going to give you a, a fail safe and a, and a good um, safe product that's not going to ultimately, you know, hopefully hurt you or hurt you, you know, severely. All right. Well, uh, good morning. Let's uh, safely get this started. I <laughs> uh, appreciate that uh, safety minute. Um, and uh, everybody, uh, today we're talking with Matt Koss, who's uh, our director of safety. Uh, he's up in our uh, Chantilly office. Um, Matt joined us uh, in the summer of 2021 as our director of corporate safety. Actually, he's based out of Baltimore. Um, he, he grew up in Pittsburgh, uh, graduated from Slippery Rock University. Uh, decided to to take his expertise closer to the East Coast. Uh, When he's not working or studying, you can find him watching sports like football, hockey, uh, you know, growing up in the Pittsburgh area, that comes naturally, uh, and enjoying all genres of music or out camping with his friends and family. Um, He's currently pursuing his master's degree in engineering, uh, advanced safety engineering and management at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, online while he's working full-time for us so uh good morning matt good morning thank you that 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 was great makes me sound really really good 
<laughs> you are. <laughs> We're happy to have you on the team. Uh, I know you've been here just for a short time, but uh, I can speak uh, for a lot of folks. So we're really excited to have you here as part of the ECS team. So welcome to the pack. Yeah, uh, I appreciate it. It's uh, so far so good. It's been uh, drinking from a fire hose, but every th experience I've had has been a good one. So I'm excited. I have no doubt. All right, so uh, we're going to uh, start with rapid fire and always got to start with food. So what's your favorite food? Uh, I'm a chicken wing guy. I know it sounds kind of plain, you know, whenever you could pick from uh, steak and barbecue and stuff. But I I grew up in Western PA and, and that was a thing on, on Sundays. We'd watch football and have, have chicken wings. So yeah. and they're better, better than Buffalo. Pittsburgh is yeah, better than good Buffalo, call believe there. it or not. Yeah. All <laughs> right. Uh, favorite sport or hobby? Well, you kind of touched on it before, you know, growing up in Western PA, that's a it's a football and hockey town. Uh, we try not to talk about baseball that much anymore, but definitely football, definitely hockey. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, OK, best vacation spot. Um, I would say Outer Banks. And I say that because I grew up going to Myrtle Beach and Ocean City and Florida. I, you know, I uh, had family vacations all around there. And I just went to the Outer Banks three years ago for the first time. And it blew me away how different and relaxing and, and how much of a change of pace it was. And, and, you know, I could see myself going there for years and years to come. I love that place. It's beautiful. Uh, oh, yeah. What job would you be terrible at? <laughs> uh, there's probably a lot, but um, <laughs> if I had to narrow it down, my wife is a teacher and I'm not sure how she does it because we, we have two, we have twin boys. They're 15 months old and that's just two. And she deals with, 25 uh eight-year-olds she's a third grade teacher every day so uh i don't have the patience and i openly admit that i would be horrendous at that job <laughs> okay uh what are you addicted to uh as weird as it sounds um and my wife will tell you I, i'm i'm addicted to growth and and developing and you know i've i've, I've made it a part of my life and and it drives her nuts most of the time but just making sure that each day I'm getting a little bit better and, and making sure that I'm not backtracking and, and what I'm doing in, in life and, you know, as, as a husband and family, but also, a, you know, professionally. Nice. Always moving forward. Uh, and uh, what is something most people don't know about you? Uh, that's a good question. Most people don't know that, that I, I worry a lot. Most people think that I'm calm, cool, and collected in just about every situation. And, uh, for the most part, and I think it's pretty normal, but for the most part, I come off as just relaxed and, you know, hey, everything's going to be OK. But, you know, I, I do worry. I worry about a lot of a lot of little things, but um, it's normally not something that people see on the outside whenever they're they're talking to me. All right. Well, uh, call me sometime. I'll help you with that. Uh, <laughs> I might take I'm, you up I'm, on that. I'm a, I'm a long time warrior and I'm married to one as well, too. So we work, we work on that all the time. Yeah. OK, so uh, your career path is a little different than our technical employees. Uh, can you share a little bit about your path and uh, how you uh, came here to ECS? Sure, sure. Absolutely. Um, well, if you know safety folks, a lot of the times they have a, a story and they, they come from a background where, um, you know, something happened in their past that um, really made them passionate about becoming a safety person and getting into that role. It's, uh, you know, just a bit different. Uh, it's not really how I came to be in, in safety. I was going for my my undergrad, and I hadn't decided on a on a um, a career just yet. I haven't declared. And in the summertime, I was working for my one of my stepdad's uh, construction companies. Uh, he he was uh, thirty eight years or so, and so I made some extra money in the summer. And at one point, it just kind of clicked where I was in construction and I was out in the field and I was seeing people, you know, at times, unfortunately, get hurt. But then there was, you know, I was in college and I didn't have a major yet. So whenever I kind of mixed the two together and said, hey, they have a health and safety program at Slippery Rock and I took a chance on it. And, you know, ever since then, it's been it's been great because it checks all the boxes for what I want out of a career, uh, meaning you get to help people. You're helping an organization. You get to work with people every day, which are, you know, the people are weird. I, I, I'm weird too, but people are weird. And you get to work with all these people and all these teams and, you know, everyone from from Tony and, and, and the folks that make the the high level decisions to the the technicians that are, you know, pounding the pavement every day. So you get a mix of everything and it's all good because you're working with people and ultimately your goal is to make things better. So um, it's been a win-win. 
Great answer, man. That uh, I tell you, we're really lucky to have you. I mean, that's a great attitude, and uh, um, it's really interesting story about how you got into safety. I mean, I would I would think all of us have a similar type story. It's uh, uh, very seldom is it something you just decide or choose. You kind of almost fall into it, and then you feel the connection. It's like you know, this is something I could do. So that's that's great. Yeah, it's, um, it's really so, weird how it happened, but it's uh, you know, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, good. Uh, so you mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, growth and a commitment to growth and improving yourself. Um, what have been the best resources, experiences, or opportunities in your career development? You know, like mentors, professional edu- uh, organizations, uh, training, uh, education. What, you know, what are some of the things that have helped get you here? Yeah, that's a great question. And I remember talking about it last week with Julie, but um I think the biggest thing has been the fact that I've had a couple of really, really good mentors, people that were in it for the right reasons. Uh, you know, their their goals and their vision are, are the right direction to go with safety. They're, they're, you know, humble, they're level-headed, and they're really, really technically sound. So it's kind of like the whole package there, whatever you talk about, somebody who you want to look up to and, and who you want to learn from. And these folks have, in a way, they've pushed me and they've pushed me to get better, but they've they've also made sure that I was growing and I was understanding and, and some of the things that I wanted to accomplish. And a lot of those people I've met through professional uh, associations. So the ASSP, the American Society of Safety Professionals, is probably the, the biggest influence because I, that's where I've met most of them. And uh, funny story, I met one of them in Las Vegas uh, at a safety conference, which is interesting that a safety conference is in Las Vegas. But um, <laughs> I come to find out he lives four miles from here. I live four miles from him. I've known him for seven, eight, nine years or so now. And it took me traveling 1,500 miles or 2,000 miles, whatever it is, from from Maryland to, to there to meet him. And, you know, I could be at his house in, in two minutes. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That's great. So, uh, um, you know, early on in your career, uh, what skill sets or attributes do you wish you could have learned uh, early on? What are some of the things that you wish you'd have learned like right away? Oh, yeah. Good question. But I have a good answer, though, too. And in safety, it's it's all about relationship. So whenever I graduated college, I knew everything, um, just, like every, <laughs> just like everybody else. Right. And I, I never quite realized and I didn't have the support at the time to to realize like, hey, you're not a safety cop. You're not out here to, you know, bust these people and, and catch them doing things wrong. It's really, really, really important to understand who they are, to understand what motivates them, to to understand, you know, hey, your spouse's name, what do you like doing on the weekends? And, you know, developing those relationships and understanding the how powerful that is took me probably probably four or five years. And I went from being a certain way and having a certain attitude towards things to understanding what motivates people. And most people were just out trying to do a good job and trying to do the best they can with the circumstances that they're in. Uh, And a lot of the times that's not in their control. So, you know, holding them responsible or accountable for things that really aren't in their control, something that I was doing, but ultimately, you know, having the realization, understanding that and understanding the, the, the people that I work with, you know, if I would have known that, from Jump Street coming right out of right out of college, instead of saying you're doing this wrong and it needs to be like this, I, I'd probably be further along. But at the same time, I'm, I'm I appreciate the fact that I recognized it or others recognized it in me and, and kind of shifted my attitude. So mm-hmm. that's great. It's a great answer. Yeah, uh, and and I know I learned similar things in in my career as well too, uh, especially working with folks and managing and leading folks is. Uh, almost always the intent is good. People don't intend to get injured. They don't intend to do things wrong. They don't intend to make mistakes, but a lot of it has to do with training. Uh, and especially in the, in the case of safety, repetitive training and just talking about it all the time. It's really an awareness thing. And if you continue to talk about folks and, and coach them up, um, then uh, a lot of these things that look intentional, really people will understand that, hey, I've got to remember, I've got to do it this way. It's a way to keep myself and my teammates safe. Right, right. And one other thing uh kind of hit me between the eyes and when it did man i was i needed i needed the weekend to think about it but was when we were investigating different incidents and and i'm trying to understand why people did what they did you know whenever i finally kind of took a step back i understood and not just understood but i thought 
man, I would make that same decision if I was given those circumstances. And I'm I'm somehow sitting here judging this person for doing X, Y, and Z when if you really think about it, if you're given those same situations, same circumstances, same, you know, um, external factors and pressures to get jobs done and things like that, um, you know, I, I'd probably do the same thing. And uh, that kind of hit me right between the eyes. It's like, wow. Okay. Yeah, that, I, I, that's need to, I need to look point. at things a bit different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent point and really an important realization. And for everybody listening today too, is uh, uh, folks usually do, what we instruct them to do or what we train them to do. And especially with safety, I mean, you, you, I know this is your biggest challenge and probably your biggest worry is constantly getting the word out and making sure folks understand you know, how important it is to do certain things in a certain way uh, because we're, we're always in a hurry. We think we're strong enough. We think, you know, we think there's no danger there. We can jump over that or get around it. And, and yet, if you just stop, take a little bit of time, it's not only going to save you from being injured, it's probably going to save a lot of time as well, too. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's an important point for folks that are listening to to understand where my head's at and hopefully where we can we, where we can head. And it's probably a question you're going to ask here shortly. But just to when when things do occur, when injuries and incidents do occur, you know, I think the approach we should be taking, you know, to become a, a true organization of a, like of a learning, a learning team to get better, because the reason that you investigate is to learn. You want to get better. You want to you want to grow. So. An important point, I think, is to ask the question, why did it make sense for this person to do this? In the time that it happened, what made sense to them? Because they're probably not trying to get hurt. They're probably not trying to cause damage to an ECS vehicle. But what in their mind was going on that said, yeah, this is the right decision? Like, you know, the fork in the road type of thing. Why did you go this way instead of that way? And not a judgmental why, but seriously, what made you think that this was the right move to make? And let's figure out why that was going on and, and other things that influenced that decision. And that's going to be where our true learning comes from. Okay. That's uh, so we'll move on to the safety portion of the, uh, of the call now. Uh, so, so I mean, we are starting to delve into it, but it, and in your words and for everybody's listening, why is workplace safety important? I, I guess I, I would like to take the question and take a step back because it's not just workplace safety. If you really think about it, safety in general is important. And, you know, it, the, the the numbers are pretty clear whenever you look at things that happen at home compared to things that happen at work. And people are more open to taking risks whenever they're at home. And maybe it's because there's nobody watching. Maybe it's because, you know, hey, I just need to do this real quick. I'm not really sure. But whenever we look at safety being important, you know, it hurts just as much to get hurt at home than it does to get hurt at work. Now, we have different exposures and different things that we deal with at work. But, um, you know, if you hurt yourself and you're out of work, you're not going to be able to provide for your family as much as you'd be able to if you're 100 um, percent. You're not going to come to work every day and do the same job. You're not going to make 100 percent of your, of your pay. You're obviously in pain. And then the thing that people don't understand a lot of the time is that affects a lot of people outside of yourself, you know, your spouse, your family, the people that depend on you to make sure that not just financially, but depend on you to make sure that, that you're able to provide a family. Even things like going up and down the stairs, being able to bend over to pick things up. Um, you know, when you're hurt, th these things really, really become challenging. Uh, think about rolling your ankle or breaking an ankle. You could barely move. So if you're like me and you have little kids, I'd I'd be out of commission and my wife would uh she'd be she'd be upset with me for making the decisions I made, that's for sure. So I know I kind of twisted that around a little bit, but workplace safety and being safe at home are similar in the sense of, you know, it still hurts. It's still important to make the right decisions to understand what the exposures are that you're faced it and and what the consequences of them can potentially be. And, you know, with some of the things that we do in training and that type of stuff, that's where we're where we're at, where our heads are at to, to help combat those types of things. So I always say, you know, take the training that you use at work and and use it at home. You know, anything that you can apply from from here and take it, take it to home, safety glasses, whenever you're weed eating, weeding the yard, things like that. I mean, it's the smallest things sometimes can make the biggest difference. 
Well, I can tell you that uh, I'm the poster child for uh, not being safe at home. I've got lots of scars to show for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I know that's funny and I'm making light of it, but uh, you make an excellent point. Uh, I, I wish you had been around and told me that about 30 years ago. Um, <laughs> how does uh, ECS make safety a priority? I mean, how do we uh, take care of the team? How do we take care of the pack? Well, um I'll give you what I know so far, two months and two weeks or whatever I've been here. So pretty comprehensive with, with what we do. Um, I think there's ways to improve, but what we have built right now, uh, our base with you know, our, our field audits for technicians and other folks that go out into the field and our, our monthly safety meetings and geez, my calendar is completely full with, with different initiatives that we have, whether it be pre-site uh, checklists to make sure that we're identifying the, the hazards that are on site or or incident reporting, and like I mentioned before, just understanding why they occur and, and making sure that we're touching base with with, uh, with our team to figure out why things happen and what's going on within our systems that that fail to ultimately lead to that. So I think there's a lot of lot of good. We're doing a lot of good. There's a lot of different initiatives going on. Um, the the couple that I mentioned there have been going on for a while, uh, from what I could tell, and. You know, we're we're just moving the needle forward, hopefully with uh with what we're gonna be doing moving forward. Excellent. So uh in in your words, uh um what makes a successful safety program? I think there's two major components and uh, I won't go too deep into uh my thought process just yet, but I think management commitment and having worker participation are the the cornerstone and and that's not just me saying that that's um you know um some of the consensus voluntary consensus standards that exist in the in the u.s and, and internationally that um you know the smartest safety folks in the in the country if not the world have developed these things and the core is management commitment um, in addition to worker participation so you have management committing the time and the resources the money uh, to the safety program and saying this is important and we will be good at this. And then you have the the workers participating in the different processes and the different things that that we have in place. So like safety meetings and audits and things like that, making sure that they're able to feel heard and, and making sure that they're able to, to participate in the program. So from there, there's uh, a ton of other things, but uh, that's the core in my mind. You, you got to have management committed to it and you have to have workers comfortable with participating in, in your program. So uh, we'll expand a little bit on that and uh, just tell us how uh, our employees, how our associates and teammates can demonstrate their commitment to safety. Sure. I think the biggest thing, uh, because we already have them in place, uh, the, the safety meetings and the the field audits whenever we have folks coming out or or we're meeting for the purpose of safety um, i know we have safety minutes in, in each meeting which is great but when we have a meeting or, or an interaction that's solely based around safety this is the purpose of why we're coming together i think the biggest thing would be to speak up if you see things that that are wrong or you see challenges that we have just be honest um candor is the name of the game in in my mind you know we understand, I understand things aren't going to be exactly as advertised in our 425 page safety program. You know, we're not going to be 100% all the time, but it's more important to know that. And it's more important to understand what our challenges are through our people's eyes than it is to say, why don't we have 100% compliance at every given moment, you know, all times throughout, you know, the, the organization. So my suggestion would be to, to speak up to, be comfortable speaking up. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes when you know if you speak up, you're going to be that guy or that 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 gal. Um, but it's ult ultimately more important, in my opinion, to to make sure that we're understanding and be, those things are being communicated than to remain silent. So here's your opportunity to paint a picture for us. Um, what does the future of the ECS safety program look like? Ah, good question. Um, I don't want to get bogged down in some of the details because there's a lot, but in my opinion, I think there's a couple things that we could do to get really, really good at and to help us develop a, a way to continually improve some of the processes that we already have in place. 
Um, I think the three biggest things that we already do that we can improve on are our, our hazard assessment. So what exposures exist to our people? You know, are we dealing with falls? Are we dealing with excavations? Are we dealing with, um, you know, moving equipment out on site? There's there's a ton of stuff, but how do we assess that? Um, so I think that there's ways that we can improve that, have a comprehensive system uh, of here's what we do in this situation. So for instance, uh, an excavation, we don't get into an excavation unless it's properly short or benched uh, or sloped. So that's what we do control wise when we have that exposure to make sure that it doesn't cave in. Uh, from there, the second piece is to inspect it or to audit it. We, we call them audits here at ECS. So when our folks go out into the field, we should be looking at these things and saying, is this the way that we assess the risk? Is this accurate? We said we would slope or bench or the contractor would slope or bench before we got into it. Um, is that being done? So we're able to measure the things that we say we're going to do before something happens. And then finally, um, incident investigations on how we investigate incidents and well, something happened, whether we got into the excavation or um, you know, maybe, maybe it sloughed off or caved in or whatever, we're going to investigate that and say, well, we, inve we inspected it or audited it. We said, okay, the, the controls were good. It was sloped or benched. And we said we had a risk assessment and we, we basically um, listed what we would do. Something went wrong through that process, which is why we're investigating the incident in general. So we need to understand those factors and those reasons, which is why it's so important that our employees understand that candor is number one. Um, you know, we find out these things after they happen. You know, we, we find out, you know, we're not doing things after an ocean inspection or after an injury happens. This is a way that we can get out in front of these types of things. If we're able to assess risk, inspect or audit the, the, the controls that we're talking about, um, hopefully we can minimize those incident investigations that come after the fact. So what I just explained there is a real brief um, continual improvement process where we can look at our operations and say, are we better than where we were yesterday? Have we learned anything? And we are able to put that into that system and that continual improvement process and know from day to day, from week to week, from month to month, that we are a safer, a better organization than we were last week or last month. Excellent. So uh, here's the portion of our conversation. Uh, we're going to ask you a couple of questions about uh, uh, things that we think our listeners would want to know. Um, so tell us, how would you answer the question, what does ECS do? I'm still trying to figure out everything, <laughs> but I would say uh, ECS is geotechnical engineers. We have many different service lines from facilities to environmental, but the uh, bread and the butter seems to be the construction material testing and, and the geotechnical and, and the folks out on the construction sites every day. All right. And, uh, what is one piece of advice you want to leave us with? Oh, good question. I would say that, and it's, it might sound preachy in a way, but I would say just to make sure that, that we're getting better. And I know I've, I've touched on it a couple of times, you know, here in our conversation, but uh, it's one of the things that I've, I've really challenged myself and, and believe me, I'm not perfect. Um, but to understand that, Hey, you know, I, in order to do more, in order to be better, I need to allow some of the things that maybe aren't as productive to to kind of burn off and 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 you know force myself or challenge myself to do something better because I I know at the end of the day it'll be worth it. But uh, man, is it hard sometimes. But just continuing to challenge yourself and make yourself better is is one of the biggest things in my life. Uh, you know, so far at least, it's just been so beneficial to to say okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to commit to it, even though I like doing this and this, I'm not going to have time for it anymore. And I know that at the end of the day, the benefits are going to be there either for myself professionally or, or for what I'm doing in my career uh, for, you know, an organization. So. All right. Thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, okay. So let's, uh, about time to wrap this up. We'll, uh, we'll fire one final question at you and then, um, you know, we'll give you a, a, a chance to kind of wrap things up. Uh, but what fills your cup? What makes you happy and brings you joy? <laughs> I remember this question, uh, and it's a good one. 
I would say before about 14 or 15 months ago, I, I would say solely professional development career wise, just focused on making sure that, you know, my career is in, in place and the goals that I want to want to meet and, and succeed at are all taken care of. But uh, then my, my wife and I had had the twins last July, and I would say everything that I just mentioned took a back seat to them. Uh, so they're, they're 14 going on 15 month old boys and, and man, are they fun? Um, not fun last night for two hours when they were awake <laughs> separately, not at the same time either, but they're just, <laughs> I never thought that, that, you know, being a father and doing, you know, becoming the, the, the dad of the situation would be so fulfilling, but, um, you know, not, God, hopefully I'm, I'm doing all right, but, um, they're they're what drives me and now at this point they're 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 everything so that's that's what brings me happiness that's what brings me joy yeah uh, i i couldn't agree more um anything else uh, any final parting shots or anything else you want to leave us with today i just i appreciate the time and the opportunity and um anybody who who can get on our system uh, and outlook or wherever uh, we can look up our our um contact information i would just encourage folks to to reach out i truly look at safety and i've always looked at safety as uh, we're a resource the folks that have safety around their name are a resource to the people that are billable that are making money for the organization i'm here to help us become better and fulfill some of our other um goals and some of the, the other things that we're looking to do but um you know, if there's any questions, if anything ever comes up where it's like, well, I don't know this or I don't know that. I know there's resources at a local level, but I'm extremely, extremely reachable and, and my phone number is out there or email address and everything. So um, just reach out if, if there's questions and, and I'll do the best I can to, to help. All right. Thanks for sharing that with us. Well, I just want to say uh, on behalf of me and Julie, uh, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, the conversation was excellent. Uh, you're a good dude. You're a good guy. And we're lucky to have you. Um, I, I really look forward to the difference you're going to make for each and every employee uh, with our safety program. But but not only that, I, I think uh, taking time and folks getting to know you is going to make a big difference, not only for you, but for the company as well, too. So uh, thank you, uh, Julie. Anything you want to say before we wrap this up? No, thanks, Matt. This has been great. We've really enjoyed it and glad that we were able to chat. Absolutely. Thank you. For, thank you guys for the time and thanks for taking, uh, you know, the initiative on doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Coffee Talk from the ground up. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have an idea on future topics, guests, or are up for a round of call, you can call me, text me, email me, just, just get in touch with me. And I'll get it to Julie and uh, we'll get it set up. And for those of you that don't want to play golf and you may hate talking on the phone, that's okay. You can send us an email at ecsmarketing at ecslimited.com. Be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. Thanks, Julie. Here's to having a great day. <laughs>